We have uh, Austin Edgar, who is a security expert, who joins us this morning uh, in Ibadan via Zoom. Austin, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Yes, please. Uh, but uh, you remember that we've had this conversation as to the killings, recent killings in Benue State Insecurity, which is worrisome. And recently you have tribal leaders who are asking President Muhammad Buhari to declare a state of emergency, not just in Benue State, but the entire country over insecurity. But just before we get to that part of it, I'd like to ask you as an expert, what exactly do you think we're dealing with in Benue State? What security situation do you think is headers, farmers clash? Do you think it's, you know, a terrorist incident, uh, tribal conflict? What exactly do you think we're dealing with here? I think it's an internal conflict. It's an internal, from my perspective, it's an internal conflict. Uh, because uh, over time, the, the killings is coming from uh, one particular region, and that is the southern district of Benway State. If you look at it, uh, from the northern, uh, northern Aziz, where they have the sitting governor, we don't have much crisis there. And also where the governor elects, that is the eastern side, we don't have problems. But we have this problem right at the southern region. And remember, the southern region is where we have the former Senate president, uh, David Mack. And they've had a lot of political, they always have a political crisis in that state. I've been privileged to speak with a few people, and I think it's more of an ethnic thing within them. But it's not out of place that uh, when people uh, want to hide their, their, their activities, they can call it headsmen or bring in some machinery to create those havoc. And so that they don't link it to them, it's not out of place to think in that manner. But whatever it is, I see it as a political crisis. Mm, okay, uh, but, but uh, we have Leonard here in the studio. Leonard, I know that you or you live or your yeah, community yeah. is very close to Bainway, yes. and I'm sure that you have an idea of what's going on. So, what do you think that uh, we're dealing with now? The insecurity issue in Benway State might be. Well, um, look, I, 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 come, I hail from Ali Fokba in Yache, Yala local government. And incidentally, we have boundary with the, the, um, where this crisis, where these killings have been um, ongoing. You know, we have boundary with them. Remember, in 19, we have a, what we call the Lodugal boundary in Ali Fokba uh, that actually separated the southern protectorate from the northern protectorate. It's a landmark boundary for security reasons, too. I think maybe that's what is still uh, helping us because we would have been faced with this attack. But... I am sorry, I may want to disagree with um, my, my brother over there that says it's more political. I don't think so. I don't think it's more of an internal um, uh, squabble. Because these killings have a pattern. I don't think it is ethnic uh, based in, in, in Benue State. You know, the governor, has said, the governor of Benue State, Ottoman, stated severely that Hesman have been attacking his, um, uh, his, his state. So I don't think it's, it's political. To me, well, it maybe have other um, reasons to say, but I think it's more of um, external aggression. And the question is that, have there been any punishment? We say we are, we are governed by the Constitution. We are governed by laws in this country. This aberration, these killings, there, there have not been any kind of arrest, any kind of prosecution in the country. People just do all sorts of immunity, kill people, and, and it's a continuous process. Okay, look at the massacre, Easter, where people were celebrating. Easter, public holidays. And then, of course, you know, they have a new go uh, governor elect in the president of the Father High Sense, a, a, a clergyman. So, who thought that, okay, what, what is political about that? That is my query. I'm, 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 maybe I'll, have, I'll succumb to superior argument. So, but the question is that there have not been any kind of deterrence whatsoever. And when you don't have those deterrence, like, just I keep saying, crime, um, um, uh, happens all over the world, you know. In 2019, I got elected as a member of the Charter Mass, and they, what, what, what we basically discuss is that, look, why do we have crimes in Africa that is more pronounced than other parts of the world? Here, there is no punishment, there is no deterrence, People just do whatever they do and no, they but, go but, but what if, I mean, if you look at it, because our case is very peculiar. For instance, you want to look at the entire, you find out that the police is responsible for protecting, you know, the lives. The police and other security agencies. 
Okay, the, the, the place, and, but, but we're saying because, I mean, our issue is peculiar. Over 200 plus million persons. What's the number of personnel that we have? Of course, you know, it's time it's we have also inadequate, I must tell you. Yes. It's so you also, you also need to agree, you also need to look at, you know, some issues that are peculiar to this. I mean, there's been several arguments that we need to restructure the security architecture so that you have um, states controlling the architecture. They can recruit as much as they want so they are able to cater for them. Uh, uh, but that's on the one hand. Because if you look at it, you probably might want to say that maybe, just maybe, the security architecture in the states are not able to contain, you know, all of this. Of uh, course, not at all. If you look at Section 214, of the, I've been trying to avoid law, but no, I, no, I have okay. to. If you look at Section 214 of the Constitution, it talks about um, uh, the control command of the, of the, of the police force. So the, the, the governors who are, who are the chief security officers have no control. For instance, if a governor of a state is not in good time with the commissioner of police, I'm telling you that if he gives the order to the commissioner of police, he, he or she will not take it. He will wait for the IG's directive. And that's why I said, look, policing has to be decentralized. We should have state policing. And so we should have a kind of a vigilante system where, especially in Bainway State, where they can respond quickly. No, um, so we still have Austin Edgar here now. Austin, if I'm sure that you would agree with me that we need to understand, you know, the problem, uh, root cause analysis or whatever it is that's causing this insecurity. And if we're able to understand it, then it will be easy for us to address it. But uh, you two have seemed to... Uh, have different opinion. You say that it's political, and he thinks that it's not political. But however, let's also get to another part of the conversation where stakeholders in this community, and a lot of persons are asking that we should declare a state of emergency. The president should go ahead and declare a state of emergency because it's, it's uh, unbecoming. Do you think that we have gotten to that point, and especially in Benue State and you know in Nigeria as a whole, that uh, a state of emergency should be declared? I will be very particular with Benue State and uh, uh, the the legal man there uh, did not agree. I don't expect him to agree with my own argument because um, we have a pattern of analyzing crime. And uh, from the perspective of which I've analyzed this crime, the crime is coming from one particular geo area of the states. If this crisis is spread across the north, the east, and the southern district of Benway State, then we agree that it's something else. But whereby one particular aspect of the kingdom in Benway State is being affected, and then we begin to see things different. And that's why the community that are crying for a state of emergency, meaning that at this point, I think from their own, they have lost confidence even in their own governor. And these, these are, you know, these, these things where the way it happened, they have more information than all of us. And I think it is the right thing to do because this is a massacre. It's something that they are taking, they're still pounding on one side of the community one aspect one aspect is one geo zone that's so if we're analyzing a crime and you say that okay it's a general thing in the whole benway state then we expect that we should have some kind of attack in the east in the north and then in the south but now it's concentrated in the south so when something is concentrated in one aspect then we know that there is something there so i think i agree with the leaders well, okay, so Nick Agule is here. Nick Agule is an indigenous of Benway State. He joins us this morning from the United Kingdom. Let's let's even share your thought. Nick, how do you feel about you know the recent killing in Benway State, all of the attacks? And do you also agree that a state of emergency should be declared? Do you have an idea of what exactly might just be going on in terms of insecurity? Do you think it's uh, you know headers farmers clash? What exactly communal conflict? What exactly do you think is going on in your state? Uh, Nika Gule, uh, can you please unmute your device? We're running out of time. Okay, yes. Yes, um, thank you very much, Mercy, for admitting me uh, into the program. I, I feel very sad uh, as an indigenous of Benue State. And even if I were not an indigenous of Benue State, I will, still, I will still feel very sad uh, for the uh, one-term killing of uh, human life, taking of human life uh, by this uh, bandit. Uh, human life is sacred and it should not be taken uh, in the way that we are seeing in Benue State. And as to whether uh, this is being perpetrated by herdsmen or the locals or anything, 
Uh, it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter at all. Uh, the Nigerian government is there with the primary responsibility to provide the uh, security of lives and property to Nigerians. And whoever is taking arms against Nigerians, the Nigerian government should face the person. Like I, like I was making, uh, I made a, a speech uh, a few days ago. I said in the United States, uh, if you take a gun against American citizens, the, the American government uh, also faces you with a gun. They don't care from where you're coming from. They don't, they don't want to know if you are white, black, you are, you are an immigrant or you are born. They, they face you with a gun. It's after they fix an appointment with God for you that they go back and start checking who this person is. They will go to your house. I mean, we had a case just, uh, was it yesterday or two days ago? A, a, an employee in a bank, he, he entered the bank and started shooting at his colleagues in the bank, killing about four of them. Within minutes, within minutes, the security were inside that bank and they took him out. It is after they took him out that they now went to his house to go and investigate and say, what could be the motive? What's happening here? Does he have collaborators and all of that? But we're not seeing that happening in Nigeria. Uh, these killings will happen. The, people, the perpetrators will be allowed to go scot-free. And then we're here analyzing. Are they full and heads men? Are they locals? Did they come from Mali? Did they come from Niger? That is failure on the side of government. Whoever takes arms, whoever he is, whether he is local, He's a, a, a vigilante, he's a Fulani Hesman, he's a PC member, PDP member, whoever. Face that person with a gun and protect Nigerians. And now, on to your question about uh, whether a state of uh, uh, emergency should be declared. There's no need for a state of emergency. State of emergency to do what? We have the entire security architecture of Nigeria. We have a chief of defense staff with service chiefs. We have an inspector general of police. Then we have the intelligence uh, agencies like uh, the DIA, the NIA, the DSS. Them just do their work. What is a state of emergency? What is a state of emergency going to add to this situation? Do you understand? The question should be: Why is it that people can come in Nigerians at random and they are and they are allowed to go? Why are they allowed to go? That is the question, uh, Messi that needs to be asked for the security agencies and their commander-in-chief, President Buhari. Hmm. Okay, so, I mean, so, so but now uh, the people, this is actually not even, uh, it's a lot to grapple with when you talk about 400 people dying in three weeks, according to reports. I mean, these are reported cases, so you don't even want they to do, delve into yeah. unreported cases, and this is just for a state, because we have also... Uh, witness and seeing that shortly after the election there seemed to be an uprise exactly. in insecurity in different parts of the country and that's nothing to write every other time you have people losing their life it's nothing but gentlemen uh, as, as we course this down because we're out of time I'll just allocate one minute to each of you to just answer what exactly is the way forward do we need to improve is it that we're overwhelmed uh, is it that we lack political will, where exactly is the challenge and what is the solution? So I start with you, Nika Goulet. The solution for me is as simple as it is. Uh, we copied our democracy from America. We also have aspiration to join the top 20 industrialized nations. So the only thing we also need to be doing is to do the things that those people are doing to be great to become industrialized, to become uh, developed. You cannot be saying, I want to catch up with someone in a race, and the person is driving in a Ferrari, and you, you are going by bicycle. Can you catch up with him? You know. So in the United States, as I gave the example, anybody that takes arms against American citizens faces firepower from the American government. Simple. It doesn't matter who the person is. Nobody debates about who this person is. Is he white, black? Is he Latino? Is he an immigrant? Is it a member of the Democratic Party or Republican? No, 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 no. Once you take arms against American citizens, you should be faced with firepower. Okay. And that is what needs to happen in Nigeria. Okay. And once you do that, it acts as a deterrent to everybody that if I take arms against Nigerians, I will not come out alive. Mm. That will be the solution. Austin, what are your thoughts on this? They should not play politics with security. 
because it has to do with human lives. You can't recover it. There's nothing as expensive as that. Politics should be set aside from security matters. So and they should reinforce security. So, so you think that that's the case right now for us in Nigeria? Especially... That's the case. Oh, okay. That's the case. They are playing politics. They are, used, they are playing politics with security, with human lives. And that's what is happening in Benway State. Mm. Okay. So interesting to note uh, how that's panning out. But yeah. uh, you're here now, and we'll just you know, end this with you. What are your thoughts on this one? I, I think we are on the same page, all of us now, that there should be punishment for uh, offenses, for offenders. We should implement the sanctioning aspect of the law. And we should, I mean, I mean I'll take it further, apart from the point where we should have good governance. Look, if we get the lo local government system right, because whether we like it or not, um, there, there's a failed local government system in Nigeria. You know, I've had to deliver a lot of uh, lectures on this um, at different forums. If the local government system works, and of course works with the, um, the locals, and then the state, and then we have the state policy, those are solutions to it. No, we don't, so if, uh, for instance, Governor Tom doesn't need to always be crying to uh, Abuja for, for, for security men. So these are uh, uh, basically what we need to do. Punish offenders, have the local government system work, and have uh, state policy. Mm. But Leonard, uh, we will talk about this local government system, especially when we just, you know, uh, looked at the dispensation of constitutional review. Yeah. And the governors or the House of Assembly members not even okaying financial autonomy for local government. That's a conversation for another for day. Another day. <laughs> we, we have to go. Yeah. Uh, we, we've had fine gentlemen, uh, one in the studio, and of, of course we've had those who've joined via Zoom this morning. Nika Gule joined us all the way from the United Kingdom. And then we also have Austin Erga, who's a security expert, who joined us this morning from Ibadan. And in the studio, Leonard Ayogo, who is a member of the Chatham House, a legal practitioner, who joined us this morning on the show. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for being part of The Breakfast. Thank you uh, much. All right, then. Thank you. Well, well, that's the size of it. I hope we have had uh, a great time. You and I have had a great time. We appreciate that you have been part of the show this morning, 7 o'clock up until this moment. That's the size of it. We will take a break. So we join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Now, if you missed out on any part of the conversation, uh, I'd ask that you join us on any of our social media platforms as you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Also on Facebook and Twitter as Plus TV Africa and of course uh, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Boko. Have a great morning. <laughs>